get ready for the state of the art in FPV freestyle. Caddx Vista for low latency HD video. Zing 2 2207 motors for impressive power and excellent durability. An ultra low vibration frame for smoother footage with less prop wash. The best components and configuration brought together for the very first time. This is the AOS 5 V2 ready to fly. Hi there everyone. I hope you can excuse the cheesy intro, but as you can imagine, I am over the moon excited to announce the launch of this. This is the AOS 5 V2 Bind and Fly Edition manufactured in partnership with iFlight. And as those of you who follow the channel will already know, I've been spending a lot of time recently looking in detail at 5-inch motors, 5-inch props, ESC settings and video systems, testing them all out as scientifically as possible to try and find the best combination of components to put into this bind and fly. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through all of the features of the design on the bench and going through why I chose each component. There are links in the video description, not only to where you can order your AOS 5 V2 bind and fly today, but also links to all the videos where I reported on the testing that led me to choose these specific components for this quad. It's a lot to cover in one video. I'm going to try and keep this one as short as I can. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. All right, I'm super excited to take you through this AOS 5 V2 bind and fly on the bench. We're going to start with a quick unboxing. So this is how the drone arrived to me from iFlight. It comes with some hardware, spare hardware, battery straps, prop nuts, and a few cable ties. We have a couple of sets of the iFlight F5 props. So I'll come back to those in a second. We've got an Allen key and then the drone itself. Also in the box is a disclaimer, some connectors for different receivers and wiring instructions if you buy the plug and play version where you're gonna install your own receiver. We also have some nice iFlight stickers as well. Coming back to the drone and starting with the frame, this is the AOS 5 V2 frame. And this frame has been designed from the ground up to give the ultimate in terms of freestyle flight performance. So the arms have been designed with the aid of finite element analysis and topology optimization to maximize stiffness and minimize weight. Now this frame is manufactured by iFlight, but it's the same design that's manufactured by a few different companies around the world now. So if you're looking for spare parts for this frame, spare parts are gonna be very readily available, either from iFlight directly, or you can also buy them from CNC drones in North America. You can buy them from Armitan Productions in Asia. You can buy them from Farin's frames in Italy. So you're always gonna have a wide availability of spares if we come on to motors, these motors are the iFlight Zing 2 2207 motors in 1850 kV. And in all the 5 inch motor testing that I did, these motors performed the best overall. Now in terms of thrust and power, they were absolutely up there with the very best of them. But they also have a number of key features which I think put them slightly above other motors in terms of the, the quality of the technology that's actually in here. Now, the first is that they incorporate an O-ring above the bearing to protect the bearing in the case of an axial load on the motor. So if you have an impact straight down onto the motor, there's an O-ring in here that protects the bearing and cushions that shock. And that prolongs the life of the bearing. And that means that these motors are gonna stay smoother for longer than other motors. They use N52H slotted arc magnets. 
So the magnets in these motors have a small center slot that slightly reduces the cogging torque of the motor and allows them to be just a little bit more responsive. And that means they accelerate faster than they would otherwise do. And that's really important for stability of the quad in the air and responsiveness to sharp stick inputs. They also have a unibel design and a unibel design is fantastic for durability. With a two-piece bell, you can have a situation where the bell can slip in a hard crash and that effectively renders the motor unusable. With a unibel design, there's almost no risk of um, slipped bells or slipped magnets inside the motor and that just makes the motor that bit more durable. Coming on to the electronics in this quad, and this is another area where I'm really excited with what we've been able to bring. This is the iFlight Blitz F7 flight controller, and this is an F7 flight controller that features a BMI 270 gyro. Now, the BMI 270 gyro has really come along leaps and bounds with Betaflight 4.3, now that OSR 4 mode is implemented by default. And in my experience, the BMI 270 gyro now offers slightly better noise performance than the MPU 6000 gyro at the same filter delay. And what that means is that you're able to turn up your D gains and your, your pitch tune a little bit tighter with a BMI 270 than you might have been able to with the MPU 6000 in my experience. Um, also, based on the reports that I've heard from, from lots of users, the rate of bad gyros with the BMI 270 is much lower today than what we're seeing with the MPU 6000. So the risk of having a bad gyro is much, much lower using that chip. In addition to that gyro, this flight controller also has a bunch of other great features. It's got 16 megabytes of onboard flash storage for black box logs. It's got a USB-C port. It's got pads for I squared C for um, GPS and compass. And it's got an onboard barometer as well. So it's really a fully featured flight controller for anything you might want to do. The ESC is a 55 amp BL Heli 32 ESC, which is important because we want RPM filtering enabled on this quad from the very start. So that's enabled and working. And the 55 amp rating means that these motors are never gonna run out of power. The ESC is gonna easily be able to keep up while staying cool as well. In terms of the video system on this quad, it's going to be shipping with the Cadex Vista VTX. And the first batch is going to be made with the Cadex Nebula Pro camera. Now, iFlight can't guarantee what DJI cameras are going to be available six months or a year from now. But the first batch is going to be made with the Nebula Pro. And they have committed to always using the best DJI cameras available for this bind and fly. So we're always going to be looking to have those 120 FPS sensors and uh, the highest possible image quality. The frame does come with some nice 3D printed extras. You do get some uh, 3D printed feet to protect the, the feet on the arms. And you also get this um, antenna mount for the VTX antenna, which you can see is kept very, very short to minimize any vibration from the VTX antenna. So that's going to preserve the, the resonance performance of the frame and give you the, the flight performance that you're looking for. It also comes with a GoPro mount for a standard GoPro. So you can, uh, you can mount something like a GoPro Hero 9 up front here very, very easily. In terms of weight, the build I've got here with all the accessories comes in at 332 and a half grams. And I would recommend flying it with something like this 1100 milliamp power 6S pack with the highest C rating available. And with the battery and everything else, the whole drone, if you include some battery straps and some props, is gonna come up to about 570 grams, which I think is really respectable for a five inch freestyle quad. The props that are included with this bind and fly are the iFlight F5 props. And in my five inch prop testing, I tested these props and they were one of the very best performers available. They perform really well in terms of efficiency, maximum thrust and vibration performance. So I'm really pleased that I've been able to include these props with the drone. 
and of course they're fantastically well matched to the 2207 motors on this quad. In terms of the available receivers, you can buy the drone plug and play with no additional receiver, or you can buy it with the TBS Crossfire Nano RX or an ELRS 900 megahertz or 2.4 gigahertz receiver as well. While we're on the page, I can show you that there are replacement parts available, replacement arms, bottom plates, top plates, spare motors, and I'm gonna be asking iFlight to add spare camera plates to this page as well. There are also a whole bunch of additional parts for whatever you might want to do. Now, when it comes to the Betaflight configuration, you'll be pleased to hear that the AOS 5 V2 Bind and Fly has a custom configuration, filter, and PID tune that I've developed. Now, some of the settings have had to be set very conservatively because it's a consumer drone and we have to put safety first. So let's jump into the Betaflight configurator now. I'm going to show you the settings that I would move to be a little bit more aggressive if you're a more experienced pilot. There are also links to my CLI diff and ESC configuration in the video description as well, if you want those. The first thing we're gonna to want to do is to set the right preset for our radio link. Because the drone comes with so many options for receivers and because people might fit their own, we don't bake in a custom configuration for the radio link. We rely on the preset for that. So I'm gonna be using ELRS 250 Hertz. And then I like the HD Freestyle Serial Separate RX whole pack settings for that. And you can just click pick and then save and reboot. And then that will apply the correct preset for whatever radio link that you're running. The next thing to do is to jump into the PID tuning tab. Now the PD balance on default Betaflight 4.3 is perfect for this quad, so I haven't touched it, but iFlight did insist on lowering the master multiplier to 1.0 just for safety reasons. I would advise increasing that quite a bit. I would run certainly between 1.2 and 1.5 or maybe even more than 1.5. Just keep moving it up until you hear any rough sounds from the motors and where you're happy is going to be based on your experience level the type of props that you like to run, whether you sometimes fly with damaged props, that sort of thing. But just start at 1.0 and just gradually increase that in steps of 0.1 until you get to a level where you're happy with how the quad is flying. And you'll see a big improvement in prop wash handling as you increase that master multiplier. In terms of filter settings, this is exactly as I recommended to iFlight, no changes here. So I would just leave this completely alone. And rate profile, obviously you're gonna set your own rates as you like to fly. The next thing to look at is the modes tab. And again, for safety reasons, iFlight have the mode set so that angle mode is always enabled and that the arming is on a single switch. Now I've got my own modes that I like to use with a pre-arm stage and arm stage and um, turtle mode on a switch. You're gonna to need to set up your modes in the way that, that you like to fly. And if you want to fly with the same modes that I have, just use the CLI diff that's down in the video description to set the modes up exactly as I have them. And that's all there is to it. Radio preset, crank up the master multiplier a little bit and set your modes. That's all you have to do and you're gonna have a fantastic experience. A key focus of AOS frames is exceptional vibration and resonance performance. And I've continued this philosophy into the design of this bind and fly as well. If we look at the gyro scaled noise plot on the roll axis, we can see that the noise floor on this bind and fly is exceptionally low up to about 200 Hertz. And there are a few things at play here. The first is the VTX antenna mount is kept purposefully very short and very stiff. So we don't introduce any resonances from the VTX antenna. The second is that the stack mounting uses all steel hardware with a steel base nut to hold the stack mounting very, very rigid so we don't get any vibrations from the stack. And the third is the choice of a BMI 270 gyro, which in my experience typically achieves a slightly lower noise floor than an MPU 6000 on an equivalent setup. The result is this really quiet region where we can place our filter cutoffs, which enables us to run more aggressive filtering and more aggressive PID gains for a smoother and more responsive flight feel overall. The same is true on the pitch axis and the yaw axis as well. The final thing to talk about before I sign off with some more flight footage 
is availability. Now the AOS 5 V2 Bind and Fly is going to be available direct from iFlight, but it's also going to be available wholesale to retailers all around the world. And this is where I ask you for your help. If you know of a local FPV retailer that already stocks iFlight products, maybe motors, ESCs, anything like that, drop them an email to ask them if they're going to be stocking the AOS 5 V2 Bind and Fly because this will help improve availability for pilots all around the world to get hold of this frame more easily. And it will also help generate interest, which will make it easier for me to bring other AOS bind and fly products to market in the future. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that it's given you all of the information you need to know to decide if the AOS 5 V2 bind and fly is right for you. If you've watched this far, please take that extra second to hit the like button. It'll help others see the video. And please check out links in the video description for more information and different ways to support the channel. That's all that I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying. They call me crazy cause I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me, I'm gonna live out in defiance. Now's our time and we are tempting fate Now's our time and we won't hit